In your headlines, the TCHTA launches the TCI Shines Cleanup campaign. The FDA approves abortion pills and an insight into the 35th meeting of cabinet. From the PTV Broadcasting Headquarters in Providencial is your number one source for news. I'm Erica Penales delivering the latest from across the country this Monday, December 20th, 2021, right to your door. News Watch starts now. In this story, Her Excellency the Acting Governor Anya Williams chaired the 35th meeting of Cabinet on Wednesday, November 24th, 2021 at the Premier's office in Providenciales. Here's more. From the press release, we've gathered that at this meeting, the Cabinet approved the consent to register subsequent charge policy in order to formalize the procedure adopted by the Crown Land Unit in the processing of the applications. They approved for the transfer of a lease over parcel 82 and 52 to Wenton Racine Roll and Wendell Rasan Roll, respectively, subject to all conditions and obligations contained in the original lease being met. The press release also states that they approved amendments to the public and environmental health COVID-19 testing regulations to further strengthen the country's response to the pandemic and mitigate against any further increase in cases, including a stricter controls on the importation of COVID-19 test kits and associated penalties for those doing so without permission from the Ministry of Health, b the closure of unapproved vendors of such test and testing sites, and c the isolation and reporting requirements for persons testing positive in approved testing sites which must be staffed by medical or nursing staff only and associated penalties for those who breach these rules. We're informed from said press release that an update was given by the Ministry of Health on the measures being taken to address and mitigate against the threat of the coronavirus to the country, including A, process on administration of booster shots, B, removing the requirement to complete health card on arrival in the country as of December 1st, 2021, and C, taxi and tour operators to be regulated according to health guidelines. Newswatch gathered that they approved amendments to the arriving passengers clearance regulations resumption of cruise ship sailing, setting out comprehensive COVID-19 protocols for passengers, crew and local businesses directly linked to the cruise line industry. They discussed the final performance of the Turks and Caicos Islands government for the period of July to September 2021 and approved the publication of the second quarter financial report. They also discussed the quarterly financial report of the government's statutory bodies for July to September and the publication of this report. Members discussed issues outstanding which should be addressed by individual statutory bodies, including with existing funds of theirs. Said press release states, the appointment of Director of Social Development, Chair Edgar Howell, Betty Ann Bean, Shayon Gardner, Legal, Roxanne Way Forbes, and Pedro Williams as members and Director of Gender Affairs has been approved or her designate and the Managing Director of CAA as ex officio members of the Turks and Caicos Islands Adoption Committee with effect from November 29, 2021 to March 31, 2023. We gather from the press release that they approved for the government of TCI to enter into negotiations with the proprietors of the purchase of parcels 53, 62, and 63 in Grand Turk, commonly known as White Sands, to be used for the purpose of securing adequate communal facilities for the development of cruise tourism, vending, and auxiliary services. They also discussed the issue of issuance and collection of audit assessment pertaining to complementary and owner stays activities under the hotel, restaurant, and tourism ordinance. Lastly, Newswatch learns that an update was given on expansion plans for the offices of the governor and deputy governor, along with the relocation of the auditor general's office. They also approved the appointment of Godfrey Smith as interim CEO of the airports authority, for a period of one year with effect from January 1st, 2022. They also approved the Let's Move campaign in support of a healthier, happier, and more productive society, and for this to be advanced to the House of Assembly. Biannually, the Turks and Caicos Hotel and Tourism Association launches the TCI Shines Cleanup Campaign to actively participate in the beautification and preservation of the islands. Newswatch brings you more. 
We've obtained from a press release that among its top priorities, the TCHTA places significant focus on the sustainability of the country's natural resources with an aim to foster practices that promote an intentional focus on environmental consciousness and responsibility by all. The press release states that the clarion call went out and, as usual, the island responded overwhelmingly resulting in cleanup efforts from Chalk Sound throughout Providenciales all the way up to the Grace Bay area. Said press release also entails that the TCHTA Sustainable Committee Chairman Mona Beeson was delighted with the engagement sharing. We are always excited to see the groups within the association and the wider community come together to join in on this effort. TCI Shines has successfully run for 13 years now, and we intend to keep doing our part to celebrate our genuine love for these beautiful surroundings of ours and to do our best to take care of it the way we should. The press release reads, Over the years, the biannual TCI Shines event has spurred school campaigns and competitions, trash bin donations, and tree planting exercises. Stacy Cox, CEO of the TCHTA, says the association is committed to up-leveling the approach to sustainability. We have a motivated team of volunteers that make up our Sustainable Tourism Committee and the plans for 2022 to partner with the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Environmental Health, the DECR, and the tourism clubs are being penned as we speak. As new technology comes into play, we are excited to assist in the country's increased sustainability efforts. We're informed that, Hundreds of bags were collected among the groups this past Saturday, and the TCHTA thanks its members, the Honorable Rachel Taylor and team, the Five Keys Committee, the Rotaractors, and the entire Turks and Caicos community for showing their unwavering support of the TCI Shines program. The association encourages every resident and visitor to care for our beautiful by nature island. It's time for a quick break. When we return, more news watch. reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. News out of the U.S. today. The FDA has been fairly busy these last two years with approvals and this latest may cause some concern for many. Here's a look. The Food and Drug Administration is making it easier to access the abortion pill in the United States. The abortion pill ban remains a big topic across the households in that country as states like Texas push toward permanently stopping women from terminating a pregnancy. So, of course, this latest announcement to now permanently allow women to receive the pill by mail for pregnancies of up to 10 weeks comes as a big shocker for some and a major disappointment for others. Now women will be able to receive the abortion pill or Cytotec or Misoprostol by mail instead of visiting their health care providers to undergo the process in person. The new approval makes it easier for women who may find it difficult to travel to seek an abortion provider or women who just wish to abort at home. Abortion pills are illegal in the TCI except for special cases where a doctor may use the pill in order to induce labor in a case where a woman has miscarried. All remaining hostages are back in the U.S. after being released by the Haitian gang that held them hostage for months. Details in this next story. 
We learned that all former hostages from a U.S.-based missionary group who were kidnapped in Haiti are now back in the United States. After a two-month ordeal, David Troyer, general director of Christian Aid Ministries, said that a plane left Haiti on Thursday carrying the 12 kidnapped missionaries only hours after they were freed. Sources say everyone, including the 10-month-old baby, 3-year-old boy, and 6-year-old boy are seemingly in good health. Two months ago, the group of 16 Americans and one Canadian including five children, were kidnapped by the 400 Mawozo gang, which initially demanded millions of dollars in ransom. It is said that the gang was demanding $1 million per person in ransom. The gang's leader had threatened to kill the hostages unless his demands were met. Brian A. Nichols, assistant secretary at the State Department's Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs, planned to dispatch experts to train the Haitian National Police SWAT team to deal with cases like these. Persons were curious as to how the safe release was made possible. However, Nichols did not provide details on how the hostages were freed in a mission to respect their privacy. He declined to comment on a notion that ransom was paid other than to say, quote, the United States government does not pay ransom for hostages, end quote. All hostages are now freed, safe and in fair health. We'll be right back when we return your sports authority and weather forecast. Sister Craft Market Souvenir Shop. Come and visit us for your travel keepsakes, keychains, artwork, t-shirts, clothing, jewelry, and many more. We're located at the Lower Bite Gas Station in Providencialis, and you can contact us at 649-341-3070. That's 649-341-3070. Sister Craft Market and Souvenir Shop. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providencialis, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. Here's the latest in your weather forecast. Here's your weather forecast for December 21st, 2021. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk, on Tuesday, partly cloudy skies, high 81, low 77, winds southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For South Caicos on Tuesday, partly cloudy skies, high 81, low 77, winds southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos on Tuesday, Mostly sunny skies, high 82, low 77, winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For Parrot and Pine Key on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies, high 82, low 77, winds southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And for Providencialis on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies, high 82, low 77, winds southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Now for your sunrise and sunset. Sunrise 624 a.m., sunset 512 p.m., and your high tides and low tides, high tide 848 a.m., 912 p.m., and low tides 224 a.m., 315 p.m. And that's it for your weather forecast. We'll be right back with more News Watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. 
We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV. We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. So many interesting stories have emerged this week, but here's another one that made this edition of Newswatch. In an interview with logistics coordinator and social media content creator for the Footsteps for Good excursion, she told Newswatch how elated she felt having followed the whole journey and seeing every stage of progress. Yes, I've been on every island with them. So I've been on Provo, North Caicos, Middle Caicos, South Caicos, Grand Turk. I wasn't on Salt Key, but then I was on French Key and uh, West Caicos yesterday. Miranda spoke about her personal experience of having visited every beautiful island, being as though the Turks and Caicos is where she grew up. Fantastic. It was so good to reunite with the islands. I grew up here, um, so I left when I was 10, and it was a really nice way to reconnect with the communities and the natural landscapes of the island. It was beautiful. She told Newswatch that the communities found on each island were very supportive of the excursion, and they would always receive them with encouragement and excitement. We had a wonderful reception. There was a huge turnout on every island, even on the smaller islands like South Caicos. There was a huge crowd of people wanting to be involved and walk and participate. Um, huge crowd support, so really impressed with the turnout from all islands. Duff said that keeping the explorers energized was a priority, having to take notice of how easily tired one can get when engaging in such an extreme sporting activity of the sort. Well, I was involved in keeping morale up by coming out and visiting the three who were walking uh, along the way. So um, I think for me to turn up with some snacks and some supplies when they were at the end of their walks was really helpful, but uh, they have a fantastic outlook and a fantastic head game. The content creator admitted that there were hardships along the way, but the explorer's great survival skills are to thank for the success of the excursion. So there was a point where they were on East Caicos camping for two days and they were out of contact. And I know that that was very difficult for them to not be in contact with, um, with the support crews. And when I saw them on day two, they were sunburnt, they were tired, they were exhausted, they had blisters on their feet, and they were really ready for a rest. But their spirits were still good, they were still high, and they still completed the walk unassisted, and I have to commend them for their um, expertise. She also added that the explorers would complete each leg of the excursion without getting any rest whatsoever. Well, they didn't really have much rest, so they had one night of rest after two days on East Caicos, and then they were straight into the um, Columbus Passage crossing on the boat. Um, I know that they were asleep most evenings at 6 p.m. Uh, and awake at 5, um, but it was a very, very hard hard and sorry it's a very tough endurance challenge for them um, I know they had medical assistance on Salt Key they had medical assistance as well um, on Ambergris Key so doctors and local doctors and nurses helped them with their sores and their cuts which was fantastic this is part two of the Filipino outreach program where we spoke to Eric Arribas Council General of the Philippine Embassy from Washington DC basically what we what we are providing the Filipinos here consular services. When you say consular services, that basically includes the renewal of their passports, their Philippine passports. How oh, come? Because for for a, most of the Filipinos are actually workers. They are work overseas workers here in uh, in their country. So they are here to make sure we're here to make sure that their passports remains valid so we're here to renew their passports in case they are to be renewed in case they're already expired or about to expire to ensure that they will be able to get their work permit and, and continue to work here uh, legally. Eric informed Newswatch on how important it is for the outreach program to be available for Filipinos here in the Turks and Caicos because of the difficulties they may face during the process independently. Uh, I think the last time that uh, that the consular team was sent here in Turks and Caicos was way back in 2019. So that's uh, 
two years ago. Well, it's not that often that what, what, that we can come here, unfortunately. Um, but because of the pandemic and all that, travel restrictions. Uh, but as much as we could, uh, we would like to come here as often as needed. Because, you see, not, it's not that easy for the Filipinos to go all the way to Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., why? Because the Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C. has jurisdiction over the, the consular services for the Filipinos here in Turks and Caicos. They, go, they cannot go to, the, to Washington, D.C. unless they have a, a valid U.S. visa. Right. So it's much easier for us to come here and serve the Filipinos here and render consular services. Arribas explained to us that the last time the council was able to host an outreach program as this one was two years ago due to the pandemic, which during those times, they also extended assistance to those affected by COVID-19. We were allowed by the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Philippine Department of Foreign Affairs, to extend the validity of their passports. Okay, Not just, you know, uh, because normally, if your passport is about to expire, you need to apply for a new passport. But in order to do that, they need to be, uh, they need to be at the Philippine em Embassy in person because their biometrics have to be taken. They are fingerprints, they are, they are a picture, and everything is done electronically. But since they could not travel to Washington, D.C., or to any other, because even going back to the Philippines was difficult coming here from Turks and Caicos. So, and it is also very difficult for our team to come here. So we had to make special arrangements for the validity of their passports to be extended um, so what they can do is just to send them across by mail to us in Washington, D.C. We'll process them there, them there, the passports, and then send them back here again. So that's just one of the special arrangements uh, that we had to do because of, the, because of the restrictions during the COVID period. Actually, now there's still COVID, but you know, things are easing up. Council General told us that it's important for the council to have a closer relationship with their people living abroad and to see how their conditions are from a first person's point of view. It's important for us to come here from time to time and establish a, a good relationship with the Filipino community because they are the first responders. If ever there's a problem um, with, with the Filipino or the Filipino community in general, we have to talk to the Filipino leaders here. And I understand that during, it was done way before my time, before my time, maybe my term here as uh, well, in Washington DC as Consul General. Um, I understand that they had done um, collaborative efforts to repatriate some of the Filipinos who have lost their jobs, but they had to do that in coordination with their employers, and also of course with the government of Turks and Caicos in coordination with the, with the officers and the staff of the Philippine Embassy. It's difficult, but it has to be done. Arribas iterated on the importance of having a relationship with the Filipinos and catering to the needs of those who ask for help. We know the need uh, for the Filipino workers to have a valid passport in yes. order for them to, to, to have a regular uh, stay here in, in your country and for them to have their work permit uh, renewed or extended. Um, so, as I've said, it's not very, very easy for them to just go out of uh, Turks and Caicos and have their passports renewed. It's not easy for them to go to the United States unless they have a valid visa, or even just to go back to the Philippines because it's really far away. So, we know the need. So, it's, also, so it's important, infor, important for us to come over here and to provide them the consular services. Uh, but then again, I also said that it's also very, very important for us to reach out to them just you know, just to interact with them, just to see how they are. And because um, that's how our government loves, our country loves its people. So even if we are, they are not in the country, in our country, the Philippines, then we have to make sure that we still have communication with them and reach out to them. He ended with well wishes and greetings for the holidays. Okay, well, first of all, I'd like to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Maligayam Pasko. Christmas time is very, very uh, dear to the Filipinos. We are very, very uh, family oriented, and usually during Christmas time, that's the time that's the time that we spend with our family. But for them who are out here and uh, in Turks and Caicos, probably celebrating Christmas without their family, uh, just like to say Merry Christmas and 
make sure that they are fine, they are well, continue to keep safe, and uh, always be happy and always pray to the Lord for the blessings uh, that He has been giving us, and to make sure that they will be, since they are working, to make sure that they will take care of their own future. They are taking care of their families back home, but as I have said to some of our Filipinos in other countries, make sure that you always save money for your own retirement because uh, we are not getting any younger. That brings us to the end of this edition of The Real News. I hate to leave you so soon, but of course, you can join us right back here every weekday at 6.30 p.m. and tap into our social media platforms at www.ptvatci.com. I'm Erica Pinales wishing you a happy holidays while keeping you informed, updated, and affiliated until next time.